Hey everybody, uh, I'm Laura Link. I am the Educational Leadership Director here in the College of Public Service at the University of Houston downtown. And we are just delighted that you joined us this evening uh, because we have a program unlike any other in the state of Texas. In fact, the certificate that you see in front of you, the Foundations of Educational Leadership Online Graduate Certificate indeed is the only certificate of its kind in the state. And this info session that you have uh, joined us this evening gives you everything you're gonna need to know about this certificate and another, a secondary pathway that we're excited to share with you, both opening this fall 2021 here at UHD. And before we discuss all the details, I'd like to introduce our support team that we have on the webinar this evening, as well as the same team that will be with you uh, when you join us as a student in the fall and throughout your course of study with us here at UHD. Uh, first and foremost is our Dean of the College of Public Service, uh, Dr. John Schwartz. He is uh, first to get connected with students and cares deeply about student success. And I know he's got a few words that he would like to share with you this evening. Dean Schwartz. Thank you very much, Laura. Well, first, welcome. We're really excited to have you here and have you interested in one of our programs. A little bit about the University of Houston downtown. We are the second largest university in Houston and we're the most diverse university in the Southern region, number 18 in the country. And there's, there's a number, as you know, of teacher preparation programs in Houston. We're the only teacher preparation program that certifies a population that's similar to Houston demographics. So we're really proud of the diversity at University of Houston downtown and of our urban education department, where we really think about deeply about issues that will make people successful in urban uh, environments. So excited to have you here. We're really excited about our new educational leadership program and certificate and concentration and hope you, you learn a lot about it. You ask questions and you sign up to join us here and become a Gator. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Dean Schwartz, and uh, delighted to be on the college team. I'm also your associate dean of the College of Public Service, uh, but perhaps a most important differentiator that I was similar to you. I worked in uh, teacher support roles, was a teacher elementary, middle, high, principal, PD director, assistant superintendent, chief academic officer, chief of talent in K-12 districts, very similar to the districts that we serve uh, around our greater Houston region. And uh, again, just delighted to bring that experience to uh, this uh, exciting uh, new programs we have built and to the classroom. Additionally, another former rock star teacher is Dr. Natasha Perez. She is our master's uh, uh, in arts and teaching director in our urban education department. And she brilliantly guides our master's program. And she is the caretaker of uh, master's courses, uh, development and support. So you will uh, certainly be working with Dr. Perez. Additionally, our uh, assistant director for graduate studies, uh, Mr. Corey Gil Kilgore is on the call and is gonna be uh, sharing just the technical support that you'll need for questions that you may have, even getting that application started, uh, registration, what are the course offerings, financial aid guidance, and more. Uh, absolutely last but not least, our, our, our partner of choice is Aldean ISD. So thank you again, Aldean, uh, for partnering with us uh, on an array of uh, projects and partnerships regarding all things uh, student teaching and educational leadership. We have with us Dr. Javier Villarreal. He's your Chief Human Resource Officer at Aldean. And additionally, I know we have Kathleen Avery, and I apologize. I know she's an executive director there in human resources and uh, fairly new, but also so wonderful to partner with you as well, uh, Dr. Avery. Again, uh, thank you so much for joining us, the entire support team. Uh, we have uh, a few poignant items to review today, and you see them here on our agenda. 
The very first thing we'd like to point out is that we have a web page. And really, on that web page, it has lots of the information in print that we will share today with you here. And we have shared that web page on every slide that we're going to uh, share, share with you this evening. And if you can see that little yellow arrow in front of you, that is it. And if you have not reviewed that, we strongly encourage you uh, to please do so uh, this evening or at any time as a follow-up and to support your understanding of our all of our offerings. Uh, so tonight we're going to do a few things. Uh, if you may have thought about it, and of course you are likely in a school role or a district role, uh, and we'd like to share just a little bit of context as to why educational leadership is the right uh, choice, uh, programmatic choice uh, in our view, and why UHD would be the right university and the right programs for you. We have two pathways that are going to be launching uh, this fall that we're going to review, one uh, in the near future, but tonight we are going to focus on our first two initial pathways. We'll also discuss who out there besides you <laughs> should apply. Uh, and again, because this is an all the specific webinar, we've got uh, a great handshake about regarding some connections, some leadership connections, some structures that are already in place uh, with Aldean ISD that will be helpful as you uh, consider uh, joining UHD for your ed leadership uh, uh, learning. And then uh, we'd like to talk about those technical aspects, the, the requirements uh, that you may need to be an eligible candidate, how to apply, and then we absolutely will have time for Q&A. And right on the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A button, and we invite you at any time to post question. Dr. Perez is going to be collecting those questions, and we will bundle them, and she will moderate uh, towards the very end of our presentation, and we can uh, discuss those together then. You know, again, so why a leadership? You know, many of you, as I mentioned, are in school and district roles right now, and you may have heard that we have had teacher shortages in the last about five or six years, but what you might not have known is that we also have uh, ed leadership shortages in our school and in our district. You know, leadership work uh, in general, uh, it certainly can be hard work. And when you're doing the right work on behalf of kids, uh, additional challenges, uh, you know, uh, may uh, be in front view. And frankly, you know, we've had a, a national context that has been difficult uh, for many of our school leaders trying to navigate those turbulence. We have many that are aging out right here in the greater Houston area. And speaking of Houston, you know, it is absolutely a city of choice. We add approximately 1,300 new Houstonians a day. And as you see again in the screen in front of you, that the population for Houston is projected to grow by 38% uh, in, in just eight and a half years by 2030. And as you could uh, extrapolate, certainly that means building new schools uh, and new growth, new employees and school leaders needed. And statistically, we know that jobs for ed leaderships are going to grow even in the, in the, the next five years. And I, I pause on, on the, the phrase ed leadership because we aren't just talking about the principal shift, even though more, most traditional programs do focus on the, the principal shift. You know, there's, there's many more uh, leadership and teacher leadership roles uh, for you to consider. And thus, part of why we built our program as we did. You know, principals, there's only one per school, a uh, few APs, perhaps, if you're working in the secondary space. So we are going to be uh, delighted to share with you the many leadership uh, and hybrid roles that we are we have in mind for uh, as the basis for this certification and for your future learning. And Aldean ISD is the perfect partnership to that because I do know with their plans for opportunity cultures, there's lots of ways to keep their talent as close to the classroom as possible, not necessarily having to uh, apply for a principal role, but many others. Um, and though, you know, because we, we, we principal role is a teacher uh, supports role, let's talk about that for just a moment. Did you know that Texas employs the most school principals in the country? In fact, we're fifth in the nation here uh, for having the highest concentration of principal jobs available. And you can see that number that I, we had gotten was back in 2018, and we know that that's grown to nearly 29,000 here in Texas. 
And just in case you were interested, uh, the median salary for the top job in the schoolhouse is just about $95,000. But again, what we are interested in is that there is more than just the singular role of principal that we are preparing uh, with, the, with these programs. You know, the majority of our school districts, and again, I know Dr. Uh, Avery and uh, Villarreal will share with that, they are looking for true instructional leaders. And that doesn't come when you assume the role of principal. In fact, it comes in lots of roles prior to the principalship, yes, including teaching in the classroom, but, but having those discrete skills to coach and lead adults is necessary before you uh, are assuredly doing an effective job in the principalship. So why UHD then? Well, hopefully you've heard uh, there's um, some, some thoughtfulness around uh, some of our thinking, but we feel very strongly that of all the programs, especially in the state of Texas, that we know how to get you job ready. And, and here's, here's why we know that. Um, first of all, our, our student teaching program in urban education is award-winning for this reason. It's for the retention of the students that we prepare. So we have been able to translate all of those, uh, you know, all of those benefits that we know that we can, uh, that, we, that we already have in the field with our student teachers into our ed leadership. And then also, as you heard a little bit of that, not about my background, those that are teaching in the program are not uh, retirees, in fact, we've been effective and successful in the K-12 space in a variety of roles, uh, and we translate that into our practice. And not to, uh, you know, certainly not to diminish any of our sister programs or any of the other leadership programs, but we are not retirees. We do not have just the limited experience that typically you get uh, in these uh, particular ed leadership uh, prep context. And we also have extensive urban education experience um, from Atlanta to Memphis to Miami, and we're happy to bring that to this program. You know, we also offer a, uh, a innovative format that we are exciting to share. We have it in that second bullet as stacked and portable courses. And what that means is that we realize that as working professionals, uh, I've, I went through my ed leadership program while I was a teacher and while I was a principal and beyond. And it's tough when you're doing double duty with work and family. So what we did is we created these compressed classes and we stacked them so that you don't have to take more than one course at a time. For example, in the fall, typically you would take two classes and you would not be in our program taking them concurrently side by side. In a 16 week normal uh, semester, you will take eight weeks start to finish of one course and then a second eight weeks start to finish of a second course. Therefore, they are stacked. The portability of these classes are, I'll explain a little bit in, the, in a subsequent slide, but just know that there are four foundational classes that we've built into our certificate that have the portable transferability to shift into uh, one of our masters that are, we are offering this fall and a future masters that we are, are building. So again, we are confident that this format is unique to us and we are excited to offer uh, this stacked and portable format uh, to you. We are an online asynchronous program so that if you are uh, super busy as we anticipate you being, uh, you have great flexibility in terms of uh, when you log in and access your content and when uh, you uh, work on the material and assignments as they relate to your courses. And uh, in red, in the, in the fourth bullet down, you know, we are, we are very cost effective. In fact, our tuition is much lower than our sister programs and certainly in the programs in the greater Houston region. And I will let uh, Mr. Kilgore share a little bit of specifics about uh, that cost effectiveness. Mr. Kilgore. Hi, thank you, Dr. Link. Uh, yes, so that is true. Um, UHD tuition is much lower and there is a reason why we make a point of that um, because at a time right now where a lot of people are, are dealing with financial concerns, some people might still have student loans from other um, degrees and previous degrees that they received. 
we want to make a point that you can come to UHD and you can get high quality training and education at an affordable rate. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. Um, just for a few examples, our uh, cost per credit hour at the graduate level for a graduate level course uh, is $655 per credit hour, uh, which is over $200 per credit hour lower uh, than U of H main campus and a lot of other um, institutions in our region. Um, so because of that, you can complete the entire certificate program or the entire degree and not be put out too much because of that. Our entire certificate program, the 12 hours, uh, would cost just over $6,000 altogether. And if you choose to do our Master of Arts in Teaching with the Educational Leadership Concentration, you could complete that degree for around $18,000 altogether, uh, which is very affordable for a 36 credit hour master's degree program. Um, and in addition to that, uh, one thing that we're really excited about is this Foundations of Educational Leadership Certificate Program, uh, even though it is only a 12 hour program, uh, has been deemed by the Department of Education as eligible for financial aid. So it is a program, a certificate program that you can apply for and receive financial aid. And of course that applies to our master's degree program as well. Um, so uh, you have those options available to you and we definitely encourage you if you are considering applying for one of these programs to go ahead and fill out a FAFSA uh, so that you can be eligible uh, for, for financial aid or any other types of, of grants or loans that might be available for you. Uh, so um, just some good news there and then I'll uh, turn it back over to Dr. Link. Yeah, that is good news. Thanks so much, Mr. Kilgore. And, and I'm not sure if you were aware, in September of 2019, the state of Texas uh, changed their certification exams for uh, the principalship. Uh, and while we're not necessarily talking about the principal exams today, starting from the very foundational classes that are built into our certificate, we, are, we have the end in mind, right? We are, we are certainly thinking about uh, what are the expected measures of success. And as a result of that, we've built our assessments to align to the new Texas performance-based exams so that you aren't doing double duty post-graduation to prepare for those state assessments. They're built in as, uh, again, measures of success that we will count as well as the state will count. And we have networking and mentoring support in view and not just the support team that you are have been introduced to this evening. We do know that in a typical, uh, more traditional ed leadership program, you've got practicum experiences with a principal on site. Uh, but again, because we are working on the very foundations, those building blocks to get you there prepared for that, that you need some coaching and support. So we have that uh, built into our, uh, our certificate and our concentration programs to come. And, you know, we're growing. There's lots of excitement around uh, this design, and we are a fast-growing university right in the heart of Houston. And these are the two pathways that we would like to just kind of quickly uh, socialize with you. Uh, we're going to start uh, a little not a little counterintuitively. We're going to start on the screen on the right side, on the certificate side, because again, these are stacked offerings. And that Foundations of the Ed Leadership Certificate, uh, not only is it unique and it readies you for a variety of roles, which you'll see in, in just a moment in a future slide. Uh, it again, just to reemphasize, it is four total classes, as Mr. Kilgore said. We are starting this fall, two classes in the fall, two classes in the spring, but we also offer all of the classes over a summer. And in a summer schedule, those same principles of being stacked and portable still apply. So you could start in, let's say, we'll call it summer one, and instead of a typical two classes in a six-week structure, you would take one class in three weeks and the second class in the second three weeks. And you can do that back to back in the summer. So you can get your entire certificate done inside of one summer. And the first that would be available to you would be the summer of 2022. And again, as Mr. Kilgore said, those are four classes, three credit hours each. Therefore, that's 12 credit hours. And yes, indeed, they are financial aid eligible courses, which is exciting 
because I want you to know that is not necessarily typical with all certificates being offered. Uh, so just be mindful of that as you are considering uh, other other programs, but you're not you're not considering over other programs as you review other programs and you realize they are not financially eligible uh, and, and you come back and uh, join with us. Nevertheless, you'll see that yellow arrow going from again uh, from the kind of the, the seal over to our graduate. It is because if you complete successfully complete those four courses in the certificate, you can transfer them into our Masters of Curriculum and Instruction with an Ed Leadership concentration. And that is a full master's program that additionally prepares you for a variety of school and district level roles. Those four stackable classes you see are there because they're the very same ones. It's not, it's not new or there's no, uh, there's no repeat. It is a 36 credit hour program. There's scholarship assistance available in that program uh, as well as financial aid. So who should apply? Um, as I mentioned, you know, leadership isn't necessarily about a role. It's not necessarily about a person in a building. And it's not just for those that are in front of us that are certified teachers and want to take the next step. Leadership is in all of us. And we invite you to consider some of these more innovative roles that I know Aldi and ISD may not be exactly the same. Uh, nomenclature, but very similarly support uh, that we, we know to be true, right? Instructional coaches, curriculum specialists, especially uh, at the district office, uh, any teacher support role, master teachers that might even hold half of a grade book as well, meaning having they've got students themselves, but also do a half day of coaching. Any uh, programmatic support that you might uh, offer school or district wide, or if you would like to shift even to grade or department share. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be those that are uh, typically certificated roles. Uh, you can think about uh, administrative assistant, assistance shifts and even roles that are at the university right here. You know, we are not necessarily in need of principal ready positions, but we certainly do need those that would be ready for the four courses as a minimum that are in our certificate. So let's talk about that just a little bit. Oh, I guess after we will talk about that. Uh, after we uh, hear from uh, Dr. Villarreal and Dr. Avery regarding specific Aldean uh, connections to these new two pathways. Dr. Villarreal. So uh, thank you, Dr. Link. So first and foremost, my name is Javier Villarreal and I am the Chief Human Resource Officer for Aldean ISD. And here also from uh, the HR Department of Aldean ISD supporting us is Kathleen Avery. Uh, she's our Executive Director of Talent Acquisition. And so she's uh, recently joined our team and we're excited to have her. Uh, and she's gonna assist in, in these uh, programs. But let me start off by just letting everybody know how excited that we are in Aldean to have the partnership with University of Houston downtown. It's been maybe a little over a year ago, Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Link, when we had the conversations about what do we need in Aldean. And, and as you can see on this slide, if, and if those of you, and I believe most of you on here have, are, are working in Aldean, you should un, uh, recognize our strategic uh, priorities here and our leadership definition. And so when we had the conversation with Dr. Link and Dr. Schwartz, we were right in the middle of developing our leadership definition. And, and so actually, let me take, take you back a little bit further. So before we developed the leadership definition, we developed our strategic priorities, and which are those five uh, listed there on the left. But mission-driven leadership was probably Dr. Goffney's most uh, urgent priority. Um, you know, we have a conversation about this all the time and, you know, it, our leadership definition is titled Leadership Matters and that's why the, the title on the slide here. But one of the things that we have come to terms with in Aldean ISD um, is, of course, leadership matters. But what, but the reason for the definition was because as both Dr. Goffney and myself got into the district, when we would ask people about leadership, there wasn't a consistent definition, there wasn't a consistent message on what leadership was or is. And, and 
one of the biggest things that we found out, and I wrote this down because, you know, Dr. Link just said leadership is not about a role. She's absolutely right. You know, I read uh, something the other day from Simon Sinek where it said where uh, there's, there's people with titles who are unable to lead, but then people who are leading who don't have titles. And so it really doesn't matter who you are in Aldi and ISD, we expect everybody to be leaders at every level of, of our organization. And so through the mission-driven leadership, which I've been charged with and, and lead in our district, I helped develop the leadership definition. And, and the, the whole definition isn't on here, but as you can see on the right, we expect all of our employees to be leaders and all of our employees to be able to connect, to inspire, and in turn, have a positive impact on, on, on student achievement. And so, but that doesn't happen by chance. It takes leaders to do that. And when we say leaders, not everybody wants to be an assistant principal or a principal, but we have lots of great employees or teachers that want to do something different or, or coach other teachers and so forth. And so this is what's exciting about this program. Um, I, Sorry, I'm going to look on my notes because I, want, I wanted to repeat some of the things Dr. Link said because they're so important. But, you know, she said that this program is unlike any other. And, and that may not resonate with you right now, but I'm going to try to, uh, to, to tell you specifically why. Uh, those of us in education, I think Dr. Link mentioned it, myself, you know, we got our, our cert certification to be principals, our master's degree and all that. And there was very few classes that were geared towards instructional leadership you know it was mainly leadership you know school law all those things that you need to know as, as a principal but then you get into the role and we expect you to be an instructional leader but you didn't have those classes and so the beauty of this it's these four classes you know the the, the, the initial classes is to prepare someone to be an instructional leader rather than waiting until learning on the job. And, and so, so that's the beauty of this. And then, so again, if you're still unsure, if you wanna get your master's and, and go that route, I'd say start here because you can take these four classes, you can get your uh, certificate. And then if you decide you wanna go further, you can, those count towards your, uh, towards your master's degree. And you're going to be uh, taking classes from, as Dr. Link uh, said, people with extensive urban experience. I cannot reiterate that enough. It's, they're the real deal. I mean, they've done the work. They've done the same work that you and I have done in districts like Aldean ISD. And uh, they're going to be able to um, teach that experience, expose you, excuse, that's the word I was looking, expose you to that experience. Uh, and, and that's like no other, you know, and better prepare you to work in a district like Aldean ISD. Um, you know, some of those positions that were listed, some I just want to point out, uh, we have had a skills specialist position. We have transitioned from skills to a instructional specialist position starting next school year. And, 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 the difference between a skills and an instructional specialist, for those of you who are in Aldean and only know of the skills, is that skills uh, wasn't a consistent position from school to school. It depended on what the principal needed, but we as a, as a cabinet or as an executive leadership team feel very strongly that an instructional specialist should be able to coach adults. And, and if, if you're able to coach adults or the teachers and teachers are able to be the best teacher they can, then we've done our job and students are going to be successful. And keep that in mind because just because someone's a great teacher doesn't mean they're a great leader of, of, of adults. And, and so again, that's something else that this program will prepare, uh, prepare you for. And, and so instructional specialist is a, is a role um, that definitely would capitalize uh, with this certificate a multi-classroom leader, and I know Dr. Link mentioned opportunity culture, you know, where we've launched opportunity culture. Uh, this, uh, we planned this year, it's launching next school year at nine of our campuses. 
And so you'll see uh, the position, of, uh, we call them MCLs, but they're multi-classroom leaders would, would behoove from, from this certificate. Department chairs, if you're at the secondary level and you wanna be a department chair. Uh, and, and so again, if you're still unsure about going the administrator route, but you're itching to be a leader and do something, this is the perfect opportunity for you. And on top of that, you heard about the coaching and support. That's, I mean, I'm an adjunct professor elsewhere and I help teach those classes. And let me tell you, you're not gonna get that coaching and networking that, that they uh, have embedded into the program here. And so I'm excited that we're able to offer this and partner with, with University of Houston downtown. It's right next door to Aldine. Um, and the last thing I'll say is you, you haven't seen it yet, but in the very near future, those positions I just talked about, on the job descriptions, you will see that, that this certificate is preferred. It's not required, of course, but, but what we believe in the program so much and in the partnership that we're gonna add it to our job descriptions as preferred. And so with that being said, um, you know, we're here for you. If you have questions, please reach out to myself. You know, you can look me up on, on, on the email or, or Kathleen Avery, and we'll get back to you on, on uh, questions. But we want uh, you as employees to know that this is an exciting time for us. And we're excited with the work ahead of us with, with University of Houston downtown or UHD, I guess I should say. Yes. Thank you so much. And we agree that this will be the differentiator. It will give you the advantage. It will give you the readiness, the tools that you will need to be effective on the job. So we don't want, just want you to get a certificate to be eligible for one of those fantastic innovative roles. We want you to get there and do a, do a, a top quality job so that uh, you can, uh, you know, so that all the students and those that are on your team and in your care certainly benefit. And if we can, we also want to try to uh, capture that adjunct talent that we know that Dr. Villarreal has over to uh, one of our classes or maybe a few of our classes in this program. So stay, stay tuned for that as well. Um, so how about just if you're thinking like, so what is it, you know, technically, what do I need to have? Uh, I want you to notice, and, and Dr. And Mr. Hilgore will come in a minute and, and talk to you about these steps, but notice that there is no GR, GRE here, and notice that there is no teaching certificate that is a prerequisite, which is what you typically see, uh, again, at our sister uh, institution. So, uh, Mr. Kilgore, if you'd like to just give us a, just a brief overview of the requirements and how-tos for both of these. Sure. Um, so basically the, the process is pretty similar for both the certificate and the full master's degree, other than a few additional requirements for the MAT. Uh, so first I'll talk about the certificate. Um, you can see uh, there at the bottom, uh, number five is kind of where you're first going to start. So we kind of put it at the bottom, but you'll actually start there. Uh, you want to submit an application through applytexas.org. So that's what we're going to use for all applications to all of our programs at UHD. Um, so yes, definitely start. I think we had a, that question in the Q&A. Start with an application at applytexas.org. You'll choose a graduate application, University of Houston downtown as the institution, and then you will choose the Foundations of Educational Leadership Graduate Certificate. Uh, so we have a few requirements there basically to um, submit official transcripts from all institutions that you've attended. Even if you got your bachelor's degree from UHD, you still need to uh, request that transcript to be sent in with your application uh, from the registrar's office. Um, you would send in a, a current resume, um, as well as a letter describing why you desire the certificate, how you anticipate it will support your professional growth and development, and why you're a good candidate. A 300 word minimum, it doesn't need to be a long, long essay, but we just want to get an idea for why you're interested in this program and what you hope to gain from it. Uh, the resume and the letter um, can be uploaded to your MyUHD account after you submit your application through Apply Texas. Um, and you can also send those to me and I'll have my uh, email address up here on the screen in a few minutes. Um, as far as the MAT with the Ed Leadership Concentration, um, the same basic process, you'll be submitting your application through Apply Texas. You need to submit all of your um, official transcripts. Um, mainly the, the differences here 
that since this is a master's degree program, uh, that's you're going to be with us a little bit longer. So we want to know a little bit more about you. So we do have a requirement for three professional letters of recommendation. Uh, there's a personal statement. Uh, you would want to indicate that your interest is in educational leadership, uh, about how you believe your educational and professional background will contribute to your success in this program. Um, and then the same process, you'll um, submit your application, you'll have access to your MyUHD account, and you can sub submit your supporting documents either through your MyUHD account or to me or graduate admissions via email. Um, and then part of the process for admission into our MAT program is that once we've reviewed your application, we will then invite you uh, to interview with some of our faculty uh, just for another chance for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us. So we'll be interviewing you and you'll be interviewing us at the same time. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kogor. And, and as a reminder, in the certificate, there is no interview process. And again, no GRE, no teaching certificate uh, required. You do have to have a bachelor's degree and it does not need to be in education for uh, the certificate. Um, and again, you just heard from Mr. Kilgore, you see this contact on the uh, flyer and on the web page, but if you want to take a, a, a screenshot of this now, Mr. Kilgore really is your technical support for all applications, really all those steps that were just reviewed. So if any of it gets fuzzy uh, after you leave and you have additional questions, he's really your first stop, but I am certainly available as is Dr. Perez as well. And we talked a lot uh, to you. Hopefully we did our jobs, which was forecast some of the questions that you would be expecting to uh, learn about. Uh, but Dr. Perez, were there any others in the Q&A uh, that we can address now? Um, yes. Uh, we, Corey had written back to someone, but I'll bring it up again because once you answer it does disappear. Um, which is if teachers can get the certificate if they are not in Aldine? And of course, the overwhelming question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This particular evening just was kind of really kind of co-sponsored, if you will, by Aldine. And we have our two Aldine professionals here that could be on, you know, on point to answer any Aldine specific uh, role questions or, you know, the value of the certificate in all Dean, but the certificate is, is for anyone in the state of Texas. And we know that HISD in terms of their career pathways, uh, Pasadena, Channel View, uh, Cleveland and beyond are honoring our certificate for very similar, very similar roles. So great question. And oh, can I take the opportunity, if you're not from Aldine and you're looking for a job, please email me or Kathleen Avery. <laughs> uh, and they really are, I mean, just such a well-run, smart, thoughtful district. So, um, you know, as, as on, on the flip side as well, they are, they are really a wonderful organization, wonderful culture, wonderful leadership. And it certainly does matter um, as shared. So thank you for that. Great question. Dr. Perez, any others? Yes, Althea Bivens would like to know the time frame for completing the program as opposed to the two years of a traditional program. Yeah, uh, great thinking. Are we if we're talking the certificate, certificate is two semesters. If you start in the fall, you take two classes. Remember, no more than one at a time. Uh, you, so you'd have two classes in the fall, two classes in the spring, and you'd be done with the certificate. Uh, or if you want to kind of take the slower route, maybe one in the fall, one in the spring, and two in the summer, you know, you'd, again, you'd be ready to apply for any of those jobs uh, that may start in fall of 2022. Um, but again, remember, the certificate does not ready you for the principalship. You still have to have a practicum uh, that would be a companion to this, uh, these foundational classes. Okay. And um, if you are from here from any other ISD, you are in the right place. You can be in this meeting. <laughs> oh my gosh, for sure. And you know, we have four other uh, info sessions that are coming and, and some of them are other district specific, but that still doesn't mean that if you are from Lubbock or Austin or wherever you are from, uh, we are Conroe, we are so glad that you are here and this is for you. 
Again, we are an asynchronous program, so we are accessible from your living room. Uh, whether that's the west side of the state, uh, north side, or right here in the Houston area. And Maricela Barron would like to know how, if the courses would prepare them to pass the TEA exam. Uh, in well, I tell you, they uh, the there's there's lots of teaching and learning, as Dr. Villarreal had mentioned, embedded in our classes. So they would certainly be a great complement to the uh, the other more content focused TEA exams that you would be preparing for. So I can't I can't say no. That's not our primary focus in these programs, but they certainly would be complementary uh, and would be supportive to that end. I know that if you were in our full masters, perhaps that would be even even more so than the certificate. And uh, Gisela would like to know um, if, there, if there's an option for her, if she already has a master's degree in educational leadership. Uh, if she already has a master's degree in ed leadership, we'd love for her to come back and take our certificate. We believe again that there is some programming that was mentioned that we know is not in any traditional ed leadership, frankly, in the country. My, my area of expertise is in assessment and grading. And as we know, in the, just the continuum of teaching and learning, uh, we get real messy as educators uh, post the instruction, right? In the assessment, the grading, and the reporting piece. So we prioritize that in this program, partnered with Dr. Tom Gusky. And again, even with my research, we, we are going to offer that to our students. So if if you are, you know, uh, someone that would like to be in a content or an instructional leadership role, we invite you to consider the certificate, even if you already have a master's degree, um, as you mentioned. And Carolee would like to know uh, how many performance-based exams must you take for the certificate? Zero. We get you ready. We start to get you ready, but the actual uh, taking of any performance or uh, completing any performance-based tasks as aligned to the state test is not in the certificate, so zero. And Alicia would like to know, if you already have a bachelor's in teaching from UHD, is it better to go ahead and apply for the MAT? That's an interesting question. Well, applying to UHD is a smart choice, clearly. And I'm so glad that you're, we've got a returning gator that we love to hear that. Um, if that's up to you, you know, we, we invite, you know, if, by starting with the certificate, you can't go wrong, as Mr. Kilgore said, because they transfer, right? That portability is there for you. So again, if you want to start with the certificate and, uh, you know, uh, find success there and then choose to go on, you may. I guess that one, that, that route gives you the most option. But if you know, for example, that you really want, you want to be a curriculum specialist in Aldean ISD or, or it may be in Lubbock, Texas, whatever the case may be, and you want to really be effective not just promoted because you've got years in the job, but you have something, uh, you know, some real authority on teaching and learning and uh, assessment and grading to deliver to your future employees, your future school, um, then, then, you know, consider the more extensive masters. We will get you started in the certificate, um, but you may wanna, you know, di dive in uh, all the way in the master's program. I do, I would like to put a little bit of an asterisk though, uh, which I had failed to mention, but just rang a bell. The, ed, the educational leadership classes are fully asynchronous. Uh, we are working to get the, uh, the remaining parts of our master's program also online. So you, there might be a few classes in the full master's program uh, that uh, would require some in-person um, expectations. We have some money questions. One of them is for Dr. Villarreal, um, but the one I'll pose before that, which I know Mr. Kilgore can answer, is about um, knowing if there's any grants available aside from financial aid for uh, the certificate. So for the certificate, um, basically with that program, there is generally some funding that is available at UHD for all students. Um, that is not necessarily something that's guaranteed for all students, but it is available. Um, that 
does still require you to complete a FAFSA in order to be eligible for that. Um, so there is funding that's available for, for all students, undergrad, graduate students, graduate certificate students, um, but not anything specifically for that certificate. Uh, for the master's program, we do have a scholarship that all students are eligible to apply for each semester. It's the Kane Scholarship. Uh, so if you're in our MAT program, you do have the ability to apply for that scholarship each semester, uh, which can provide a little bit of assistance uh, for your tuition in that particular semester. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the question from Maria Lim to Dr. Villarreal um, is about if you enroll in this program and be certified, how will this affect salary status, status as instructional uh, specialist? I don't know if you've seen that question, Dr. Villarreal. Um, yes, I did. And so please note that any certification that it doesn't affect anyone's salary, it's the position. So if the position requires the certification, that's what the salary is. But so, uh, the difference for a skills, as I mentioned earlier, if you're asking that, it's probably because you understand skills. Uh, the difference in salary is we added five uh, duty duty days to the instructional specialist. So it would be the same rate that you would earn now as a teacher, but an additional five days. And then I believe uh, that it also asked about an MCL, what the difference is. So you cannot be an instructional specialist and an MCL because an instructional specialist strictly is an instructional coach to teachers. And that's what that position is for. The multi-classroom leader will do some of that part-time and then the other time teaching students as well, while they have two student teachers or we call them teacher residents learning from them. So it's like a gradual release where, you know, they'll start off monitoring that, that MCL. And as the months go by, it'll, they'll, that MCL will allow the teacher residents to take over the class while they go and coach and, and do model lessons and so forth to the other teachers. Now the MCL there, because there's, there's, it's a multi-role and because of that program and, and position, that role is a teacher salary plus an $8,000 stipend. And so that is more than an instructional specialist, but you're doing two roles. And so that, that's how that works. Okay, and <clears throat> I don't want Tanya to think that I forgot about her. It's, um, she just wanted to know, Dr. Link, if you could go back two slides so that she could take a picture of the course offerings. And someone else I think also wasn't able to get a picture of another slide that you recommended. So while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and ask some other questions. Dr. Villarreal, do you know of any specific grants for all Dean employees that might be in the works? <laughs> Uh, I don't know of any specific grants, but what I will say is I've been talking to our chief transformation officer, Adrian Bustillos, and asked him if he can look for grants. He, he's the guru of that because uh, I'm not making any promises for this first round because we're still researching, but my hope, and if I had it my way, and Dr. Link and Dr. Schwartz can tell you I've been asking this, is I would like to get a cohort of just strictly Aldine employees, you know, going through this. And so I have asked our chief transformation officer to research to see if there's grants out there that could help offset that. And so we're in hopes, again, I can't promise anything in the immediate future, but it is something that we are discussing and looking into. Good to know, okay. And um, Gloria would like to know if next summer is the first opportunity to complete the certification path. Um, and what is the deadline to apply? Oh, yeah, smart, smart. Uh, Dr. Mr. Kilgore, August 1st, right? But bef before that is encouraged, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so the, the first opportunity to apply for it is for this, this coming fall. Uh, so we are beginning the, the certificate program this fall. Uh, so the application deadline uh, to apply to begin the certificate program and the, the MAT in the fall is, is actually July 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would need to have everything in by that date. But yes, we definitely strongly encourage you to start the process earlier than that, um, just because there's a, a lot of admissions things going on at that time of year. So uh, the, the earlier you get started, the earlier you can get registered for class and not have to, to stress as you're leading up to that. Um, for those that would be interested in starting 
the program next summer. Uh, typically, the we don't have a deadline set for that yet, but typically the deadline for summer starts is the middle of May. Uh, so just keep an eye on, on our website uh, for information about when that's uh, going to be coming up. Yeah, and again, we are building our first cohort, but we are not looking to have a very uh, expansive one. So sooner rather than later, we want to really be able to wrap our arms around this first group and uh, do it right and really monitor our progress, you know, all the expectations that we have set for ourselves, make sure that we are meeting our targets. So we would love for you to be uh, in our inaugural cohort. So we encourage applications again, sooner rather than, than later in the summer for sure. So thank you so much for that question. So Patricia Taylor wants to know if you have an MS, can you still take the certification? Yeah, the certification. Now, Mr. Kogor, you tell me if I'm speaking out of turn, but the certification is for anyone, even if you are in the in the business world, if you are in nonprofits, you do not have to have an educational role, pedigree, uh, background. We really, we prepare you uh, even as a first entry into uh, K-12 leadership. So the short answer is, again, the certificate is for everyone that is interested in investments in themselves and, and of others and is looking to uh, support others, um, other adults, uh, especially in, in the K-12 space. So yeah, I, would, I would agree with that, that that's part of the, you know, with the part of the process of having that chance for you to you know, submit that letter stating what your interest is, is even if you're coming from something that is not an education background, you can explain to us and then tell us, you know, why you're interested in this, what you want to get from it. And that's what we want to see from that. Um, so yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And so Tamika, that, that partially answered your question as well, because you already have a master's in CNI. Um, and, but another part of her question is if her transcript would be reviewed with the possibility of not having to take all four of the courses. Possibly, yes. And we would, we would happy to do a, a transcript review. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, someone is asking, so to confirm the start times for the certification, is either the fall or the summer, but not the spring? That's somebody's question. Mr. Kilgore? Uh, that's right, yeah, for at least for this year, um, going into this year, we would be starting in the fall because of the order that the courses are being offered in. The, the first two courses for the program are being offered in the fall. Uh, so we would, we would do the, the start in the fall. Um, if, if anything were to change in the future regarding that, we always update that on our website as well. So you just need to keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an important question as well that a couple, a couple of people want to know. If by adding or by um, having the certificate, would they be eligible to take the Texas principal exam? They would not. And that, that's important for you to note is that it is incomplete. The certificate alone is incomplete. It, it, it gets the foundational readiness there, but you still have to take the practicum and a few other classes in preparation for that principal exam. So remember, the focus tonight is while we are, we, we, we know the target for some might be the principalship, but we are, we don't stop there. We, we acknowledge that there is an array of roles uh, that frankly you should first uh, experience and evidence effectiveness in, and that's what these pathways provide. Mm -hmm. And Patricia Taylor would like to know if this certification is equal to a mid-management certificate or certification. I don't you know, that, that's, uh, yes. I mean, I, I, if I'm going to generalize in a business sense, yes, you know, these are, the roles that we are offering are certainly not all inclusive, you know, but there are, there are some folks, uh, some districts that have, for example, a master teacher role that is hybrid that still allows you to hold in the secondary space a few classes. So you would have a grade book. And so that when, that, that, that might be considered half entry level, half mid man, half management, because you would have a cadre 
of uh, mentees on your roster as well. So I guess the short answer is yes. You can, you can kind of consider it uh, to be that, um, but so much more. Okay. And that's it. We've gone through all the questions. Great questions. Oh, that's wonderful. And I think we are, we're just about near uh, time. Uh, Laura, can I just say one quick thing? Yeah, please do. I think we meant there was a question on scholarships and I'm just going to put in the chat our scholarship webpage. Uh, if you're interested in other, you know, internal or UHD scholarships we have, and I'd pay attention to the TEACH grant, which mm. covers $8,000 of graduate school and also the Kane uh, scholarship, which is yeah, and please so reach out to us. You know, we have uh, lots of financial uh, opportunities for you to explore. Uh, really, please go back to the website, consider even reviewing this uh, webinar if you need to, and let us help you work through any uh, concerns you may have or clarify any remaining questions. We would love for you to be a part of our inaugural cohort. Um, and we thank you for the opportunity to share with you this evening. Thank you for investing in yourself. Thank you for investing in your future. And we look forward to welcoming you in the fall of 2021 as our first ever educational leadership uh, cohort. Uh, and uh, have a great evening. Thank That's you. So thing. There, there are two yeah. more oh. questions, actually. Oh, uh, okay. a, a great question. That was, a, that was a pretty good ending there, Dr. I Frank. know. I'm sorry. Like I was nailing it. <laughs> I feel like I was nailing it in the end, <laughs> but let's answer those questions. So Althea Bivens asked a great question, which is if her main objective is to be principal, should she get the certificate? 100%, because they are the foundational classes you will need to transfer to the remainder of a more traditional uh, master's effort. So the short answer is yes, get it. You can't go wrong with it. In fact, what the certificate allows you to do is to be eligible more quickly than any other program that there is uh, traditionally available to you, right? You could in two semesters be ready for those roles that were mentioned in Aldine and all of the other teacher support roles, uh, you know, uh, as that were, you know, kind of uh, highlighted on the screen, you will be already working in these um, and be eligible. And so take advantage of the certificate, um, absolutely. Uh, we have in the works, it, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we, uh, we certainly have in the works our uh, masters that provide the principal certification that is coming. So uh, stay tuned and we are excited to share that we are going to be able to offer that inside of one year. So if you take two uh, semesters with us, uh, you, uh, you might only have only one more to go uh, when we offer that, again, that full master's that leads to principal certification. So for us, it's, uh, it's a win-win-win if you choose to uh, take that first, um, first step with the certificate. And lastly, Tanya would like to know if they will have access to the recording. Yes, uh, we are going to be posting this on the webpage. So again, if you look, you see the uh, the web page address right up there in the corner of the screen. So the short answer is yes, this is going to be public. So hopefully, uh, you know, I have no spinach in my teeth and that we are all <laughs> looking polished and come across um, as professional and wonderful as I know uh, this team is. Do we have a layout of what the classes will look like? I'm, I'm not sure by layout, uh, Lisa, you mean schedule or... Uh... We have that on, on the website. We have the, the list of the courses that are required for, for both programs is, is listed on the website. Yeah. Uh, so definitely go to the website and you can find all of that, that information listed up there. Agreed. All right. Okay. How That's are we, Dr. Perez? Did we get them all? Got them all. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to nail the second ending <laughs> as good as the first, but, uh, but again, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time and interest. Thank you, Aldine ISD. You are a choice partner and a, a, you, and a choice educator uh, in our area, and we are proud to uh, partner our programs with your district and for all of you on behalf of the students in the greater Houston area, just thank you in, for investing in them 
and we wish you uh, a wonderful evening. We can't wait to see you here at UHD, even if it's in an asynchronous place. Uh, we'll see you soon. Go Gators. Good night. Take care. Have a good night.